In this video, we're going to go through a CFA level one exam style question on the yield to call and the yield to worst. Very specific fixed income topics, often overlooked. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. The following call schedule is available for a 6% seven year annual coupon bond currently trading at 103.4 per 100 of par value, which is first callable in four years time. And we've got um, a schedule uh, for the end of the fourth, fifth and sixth year. That's when the bond may be called. And obviously uh, a callable one bond, one which may be called is a bond that can be retired early by its issuer. Uh, bond holders have no um, saying in that matter they'll have to give up the bond and receive whatever is the call price uh, in this case. And as you can see, it's a declining call price. Depending on when the bond is called, it gets closer and closer to 100. That is the par value of the instrument. Now, the bonds yield to first call and the yield to worst are closest too. And we've got options for both, um, for both concepts. Okay, so as I said, um, when you have a callable bond, the issuer may... Um, move forward the redemption date, um, and that's a choice which the bond, which the uh, issuer has. Bondholders have to give up the bond and receive whatever is the price, and we're supposed to calculate the yield under certain assumptions that it's called on the first date. That's the yield to first call. So at the end of the fourth year, over here under these terms, and then we are also supposed to find what would be the worst option for the uh, for the investors, that's going to be the yield to worst. The way we proceed in these questions is by computing uh, or performing the classic yield to maturity computations on our calculators, but given a new set of FV, uh, future value data coming from the call price, and new uh, N parameters for the uh, number of years uh, remaining or the tenor of the bond will be adjusted depending on what we assume that the bond gets called at the end of the fourth, fifth or sixth year, etc. So let's proceed with the calculator. Okay, let's start with the yield to first call, which we were asked about in the question. So we're going to use the time value of money worksheet on our calculators, but this time for n, we will be plugging in the number of years equal to four because that's you know the end of the fourth year is the first time when the bond may be called and other than that we'll have a um, you know the, the classic set of parameters but fv very importantly the future value is going to be set at the call price at the end of the fourth year which as we can see is 102 over here now what is the current price of the bond, the PV, the you know the present value? Uh, we are told in the question that the bond is trading at 103.4 per 100 of par value. So that's a negative 103.4. Remember that the PV input in the time value of money worksheet should be negative if you're going to express the future flows as something positive. Uh, what else do we have? We've got a coupon uh, on this bond. So a PMT, a payment equal to um, six because the bond pays a 6% uh, coupon on a par value of 100. So let's put these, uh, let's get these inputs into our calculator now. I'm going to say, well, obviously, uh, clear your time value of money worksheet. So second followed by FV. And now four for N, I've got 102 for FV. I've got 103.4 negative for um, PV and six for PMT, and I'm computing. So CPT I over Y, so CPT I over Y, and this gives 5.49%. 5.49%, and this alone allows me to basically um, limit the choice of answers to answers A and C, which have 5.49 as the answer for yield to um, first call. Now let's compute the yield to worst. But we don't know what it's going to be yet. We've got to proceed with the yield next to second call and subsequently yield to third call, yield to uh, maturity as well, and see which one gives the, you know, the 
the lowest option in terms of the I over Y or the yield to maturity. So yield to second call, what we're going to do is just substitute N for five and we're going to have a different FV. So no longer 102 because the call schedule tells us that if the bond is called at the end of the um, fifth year, the uh, price, the call price is going to be 101. So I'm going to have 101 over here. Other than that, I'm going to keep all the other parameters the same. So with the time value of money worksheet on your Texas Instruments calculator, you can simply overwrite the relevant inputs. So uh, I'm going to have five for N and 101, obviously positive for FV and recompute my... Um, I over Y parameter, which is going to be my time value of, uh, sorry, my um, yield to maturity. And this brings, uh, or this gives 5.385, roughly. So 5.39%, let's call it that. Now, what about the yield to um, third call? Because there's also that option. This time we're going to have N equal to um, 6, and an FV, which is equal to 100, isn't it? So um, just overwrite these inputs, 6 for N and um, 100 for FV, and see what we get when we recompute I over Y. It gives 5.32%, and now, I'm going to use a different color because it's, um, you know, it's simply the yield to maturity, isn't it? The yield to maturity, assuming the bond is not called early. So we're going to have an N equal to seven. The other parameters, including a V, they remain the same, don't they? So just have seven, press N, recompute I over Y. And I see that this becomes 5.4, roughly. Right, so we know the yield to first call. And we can now pick the lowest of these yields. And the lowest yield is the one associated with the bond being called on its third call date at a, at a price of 100. So this is the yield to worse. And if I look at the answers, the possible answers to this question, uh, you know, this combination is uh, shown in uh, answer A.